my sermon for the second Sunday of Christmas season and for January 3rd, 2021 is Keeping Christmas based on the opening prologue of John chapter 1. Every Christmas, I like to watch the Sesame Street Christmas special entitled Christmas Eve on Sesame Street. It was originally broadcast on PBS in December of 1978 when I was 10 years old. For years, we had this uh, on VHS, and then we had to upgrade to DVD, and then this year, I purchased a digital copy for $7.99 from Amazon Video. That is not a promotional. It's mostly about kids trying to figure out how Santa Claus makes it down such a narrow and skinny chimney or how he gets into houses that have no chimneys, no fireplaces. But it's also featuring some great music and one song written by Sam Pottle and David Axelrod and sung by uh, by Sesame Street's Bob McGrath, entitled, Keep Christmas With You All Through the Year. And one of the stanzas reads, Christmas means the spirit of giving, peace and joy to you, the goodness of loving, the gladness of living. These are Christmas too. So keep Christmas with you all through the year. Bing Crosby and Ella Fitzgerald sang about this same notion, too. Ella's version came on her 1960 Christmas album, Ella Wishes You a Swingin' Christmas. And there's a bonus track, which not on the original LP, it was entitled The Secret of Christmas. And this beautiful song culminates in this line, it's not the things you do at Christmas, it's the Christmas things you do all year through. That's the secret of Christmas. So is it important to keep Christmas with you all through the year? How do we keep Christmas and what does it mean to do so? Why are we still talking about Christmas on January the 3rd anyway, Pastor? Spiritual writer and teacher John Shea talks about Christmas in a way that is very helpful here. And so let me share with you his thoughts. John Shea says that he has always imagined Christmas as a house. And the house of Christmas is a completely round structure with three rooms and each room encircling the entire building. The outer room is the room of culture. In this room are all of society's expressions of Christmas, shopping, gift giving, TV specials, choral ensembles, office parties, the Santa Claus story and all its endless variations, family gatherings, decorations, evergreen trees, Christmas cards, etc. This is all the cultural Christmas that generally kicks off uh, the morning of Thanksgiving. But in the middle room, the middle circle room of Christmas in the house of Christmas is the room of religion and church. In this room are all the church activities from the liturgies that we use, the special music, that the carols that we sing, the hanging of the greens, the Advent devotionals, even mission projects related to Christmas and so on. All these church and religious activities that honor the birth of Jesus and celebrate the good news. This is the second room of Christmas. But the inner room is the, in the house of Christmas is the mystical room. In this room, the birth of Christ happens in the soul. So, for example, Phillips Brooks writes in his Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, these words. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. And that line describes so well what we mean when we talk about the 
mystical inner room in the house of Christmas. For this is where the mystery of the incarnation happens. So when we read as we did just now from John chapter one, we hear language that is mystical, even abstract, hard to grasp. In the beginning was the word, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. This is all incarnation language. It is the strange mystical language of the inner room of Christmas. It is the core, the essence of what Christmas is all about. It is where we meet God face to face, as it were, without dissipating into nothingness. This inner mystical room of Christmas is something that cultural Christmas, that third outer room of Christmas, doesn't really even acknowledge or know that it exists, which is why cultural Christmas is so infuriating. All the buying and spending, all the inane music and manic have-tos have nothing to do with the inner room, the mystical room of incarnation. But the inner room is also something to which our religious liberty and symbols, my job, that we can only point to. And yet we try, we do what we can to point to this inner mystical room of Christmas. For we know intuitively that something like this really exists. And we long for it. And we may even have brief encounters with the holy. It's what we need to be complete and whole. We all have access to this inner mystical room, but it is not easy and it's difficult to sustain. G.K. Chesterton described it this way. He wrote, he wrote this, Christmas is as if a man had found an inner room in the very heart of his own house, which he had never suspected and seen a light coming from within. It is as if he found something in the back of his own heart that betrayed him into good. Betrayed him into good. So we can say, if by example, if we read Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, that Ebenezer Scrooge was completely transformed into a new person, or more likely, he became more of his true self. He had this happened when he was confronted with this inner room in the back of his heart. And this inner room betrayed him into good. So at the end of the story, Scrooge says, I will keep Christmas with all my heart and try to keep it all the year. So what Sesame Street and Ella Fitzgerald sang about, about keeping Christmas all through the year, is actually possible. It does happen. It is more than a passing sentiment, more than a nice thought. It is not something of which we should be dismissive. Keeping Christmas with us all through the year is not something undignified, something that is beneath us. It is actually what God created us to do. So what is helpful for us here, I believe, is to realize that the two outer rooms of the house of Christmas will necessarily go away. We will take down the trees and lights and pack away the wrapping paper until next year. We will stop hearing holly jolly Christmas while at the grocery store. This is the outer room, cultural Christmas, and society has already moved well on. And that was clear enough to me on Christmas night itself. 
when I saw that my options to watch on TV were WWF Friday Night Smackdown or MacGyver and Magnum P.I. And suddenly, How the Grinch Stole Christmas didn't look so bad after all. And even the second room of Christmas, the religious and liturgical language, we will shift to another season. We will stop lighting the Christmas candle and stop with the carols already and pray different prayers and use different language. But just because these two outer rooms will be closed doesn't mean that the inner mystical room in the house of Christmas will cease operations. The incarnation is part of who we are. That inner room will continue to call us and invite us and betray us into good. We needn't let this go. In fact, it is detrimental to our very souls for us to do so. For we are created in the image of God, the Bible teaches us early on. So for us to not keep Christmas, to not keep the incarnation with us all through the year is against our very nature. In fact, we might suggest that when we feel lost or despairing or hopeless, or we feel like it's never going to get any better than it is right now, it could be that we have simply forgotten that the incarnation has occurred. And this incarnation has enabled you, as it says in John 1, verse 12, to be a child of God. So it is essential that we keep Christmas with us all through the year. And how do we do this? We need some contemplative practices like silent prayer, meditating on scriptures, journaling, music, creating art, gardening, building something, anything that we can do that keeps the spiritual nature of reality and the physical nature of reality connected in our souls. Sometimes going to see a spiritual director really helps. Having a trusted mentor. Do you have someone that you can speak to your relation to about your relationship with God and what is going on within your soul? Whatever it is, we must maintain some activity or do some ritual other than clicking the remote control, something that is life-giving, something that germinates the spark of grace within you. Regardless of what happens in 2021, this year and every year, we must grow in our capacity to operate from within. We must learn to find and move through life from the spiritual center of ourselves. We understand our souls are the parts of us that continue to live even after our physical bodies and our minds and our wills are no longer needed. So we must pay more attention to our souls to cultivate our inner mystical rooms of Christmas more than we do even our physical outer selves. Perhaps we have made New Year's resolutions that have to do with how we look or what we do. And eating well and exercising, these are important for our physical and mental well-being. But by the same logic, we want our souls to be well-fed. We want our souls to be larger than life so that we have the life that God intended, so that we remember who we are, so we keep our souls connected to God, so that we live the life that truly is life, and so that when we die, we don't really die. 
So perhaps, may I suggest to you a daily morning prayer routine. And it can be before you get up out of bed and get busy and get distracted as we all do, perhaps to start each day by asking God, God, keep the inner mystical room, keep my soul space uncluttered. And Lord, may your word be made flesh within me right now. And may Christ be born in me today and every day, all through the year. May it be so for us this day, now and forever. Amen.